as Bjorn would say, holy macaroni. Oh, <laughs> this is yeah, that thing is crazy. I mean, I, the more I spend time with it, the less wild it feels. It just feels normal. And we literally have the factory to ourselves, Colton. What are we doing? Yeah. We have <laughs> the Cybertruck factory uh, to ourselves. This is so cool. It's on 35s, but if you want to go 37s, probably a no-go. <laughs> <laughs> but someone in Florida is going to put it on 37s and squat it, oh, yeah. which will be hilarious. <laughs> Your Model S Plaid is the only one that we have that has multiple permanent bags. Right, that's all permanent. Now, yeah. Everything else you run an induction front yeah. and permanent on the yep. on the primary axle. So, so the general idea behind that is that a permanent magnet motor has higher active efficiency but lower passive efficiency. Sure. But this video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their Made in USA all-season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantire.com EV. This video is also brought to you by Magna, forward for all. The world's smallest <laughs> strawberry. I didn't order it. I didn't order it. <laughs> what happened? There you go. Alyssa ordered it. <laughs> she mobile ordered yeah. it? So why did she click the small one? She said that that was all the uh, <laughs> in your previous ones. And I called her I'm like, oh, this is the tiny one. <laughs> okay. So we also have snacks. Oh, you, sir. good stuff. So I was super delayed. Yeah. And the cyber truck people are in line to go see it. Yeah. And so we're starting the video clip right now. right now. So we're in Austin, Texas. We're gonna go to the Cybertruck delivery event. We got a we rented a Tesla Model Three. Of course. From Hertz, standard range. Hopefully we have enough to make it the five miles down yep. the road. <laughs> probably could have just Ubered. Yeah, probably. But you gotta roll up in a Tesla to a Tesla of event. Of course. And plus now that Hertz has the new app experience. They like, they should put the app on my phone, I think. Okay. We're gonna try all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. We are off to Gigafactory, Texas. So, yeah, yeah, should be cool. Goodness gracious, welcome to Austin. It's wet and humid and we are heading to Hertz to go get our Tesla Model 3, hopefully. I think um, they should have, uh, my understanding is they kind of just parked it off to the side and left the keys in it so we don't even have to wait in line. But uh, we'll see, that works at LAX, I'm not sure about here. So yeah, let's go see if we can get our Tesla. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll share some early predictions and then we'll share the event and then we'll share our final thoughts after the event and more of a vlog style video today than anything useful. If you want to watch a review, check out MKBHD and Matt Watson has one as well, right? Yeah, hell yeah. So I can't wait to see what they say about it, but let's go get the car. Look at all the freaking electric cars they have here. Someone left that Polestar 2 on while charging. That's a good spec. Um, and they all have level two Tesla wall connectors. Is that what those are? They appear to be all wall connectors. How about that? 16789 right there. No, I think we're good. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. Appreciate it. There we are, fogged up. A, <laughs> a white Tesla Model 3. That's a very Colton spec. <laughs> okay. Great. There we go. All right, jumping in. I can already see that the seat is falling apart over here. <laughs> okay. Can't, wow, it's misty as heck. Holy smokes. Whoa, is this an LFP? Uh, hold on, 93% it's charged to, which means we need to return it with at least 93%. Nice. Or they charge us $35, convenience fee. I don't know how it's convenient when they have chargers here. Oh my God, look at your headrest. <laughs> oh my God. Whoa, I don't even want to put my head on that. Gross, you want to switch headrests? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pop this one out. <laughs> Okay, this one's been in Austin supercharged before. Let's get the AC cranking in this thing. Auto. So how does the whole like key thing to your profile work? Because isn't that supposed to be a thing now? I think it's supposed to pop up through your app, which I don't know how they do that. 
my dad just did this. Okay, well, it also needs a new software update, so perhaps this one hasn't had that software update yet? Could be. It's on 2022, 2023. Okay, don't know. Let's just check something really quick. If we come here to software, 27,000 miles on this thing. Do, 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 do. Enable. Let's check the stats on this thing. Full self-driving computer, but it doesn't mean it has anything. High voltage battery, juiced up. Everything looks good. Battery temps, good temperature. Oh, maybe this car is not CCS enabled. And then the only other thing we should check to see if it's LFP, which is 100% LFP. Boom. Love that. Good this is the car to have. Got to put the key card there. Here. That is the last thing, sir. Oh, what Back the heck? Here. Oh, that's a Model 3 Highland. Yes. Which is oh, the sure, last, sure. last Model 3 I've driven. Okay. So that's good. Into drive, we have a regen limit. Park assist is degraded. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Vision only. Who thought that was a good idea? All right. After trashing Tesla, now let's see if they let us into the event. I hear they're pretty touchy about those things. So, a couple settings. Let's get to, let's put in Giga Tejas. Tesla Giga Texas, 3.1 miles. So close. All right, off we go. We need to be there in 30 minutes. That's actually perfect timing. Look at that. Uh, can't see. <laughs> Exit the left. Okay. How do you drive one of these things? They said uh, we're at 92%. They said we need to bring it back within 5% of the 92% or they charge us $25. Every time I get a Hertz rental car, it's different. Every time. It's, they have, there is no consistency. I don't know if it's trial and error or they just make up stuff as you go. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but rental car rippage, fastest car in the world right here. <laughs> All right, well, let's get over there. We got 4.2 miles and we'll be there right on time. I heard it's kind of a cluster, so yep. it's not like a big rush or anything. We'll just kind of go and stand in line for the next two hours. Can't wait. How much fun does that sound? Amazing. All right, see you all over there. Colton, uh, what is your prediction for the Cybertruck delivery event? <laughs> I just asked you and you said you have zero idea, so I wanted to at least put that on YouTube. Yeah, honestly, I have no clue what we're, what we're gonna be seeing today, if we're seeing all the trims. I would hope, of course, we're seeing pricing and stuff. Um, I know everybody has their speculations and yeah, I honestly am just kind of like, well, I have no idea. Yeah, it's, uh, so we know at least according to Tesla, the confirmed stats are 11,000 pounds towing and 2,500 pounds payload, which yep. is a lot less than they originally quoted. Yep. And so like, it kind of sounds like it's not as cool and certainly not for the price that it was originally communicated. So we need to go into it with a realistic view here. Yep. Now, and you know, of course the world changed, but you know, don't, don't announce pricing for a product coming out in four years, the world changes. Yep. No one expected as crazy as it did, but you know, is what it is. So essentially Tesla's kept pricing so tight-lipped. I mean, normally there's leaks, there's something, nothing on this topic. Nothing. And so I'm thinking it's gonna be expensive, but by the time everyone's watching this video, we'll know and um, should be interesting. So here we are, Tesla. Oh yeah, here we go. Into traction control. Whatever tires Hertz put on this car, <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> Not at all. So we're pulling into the contractor entrance, which we're at Giga Texas. I guess we park back here. Oh, I'm not sure. Let's, we got a Tesla Model Y security vehicle over here. Let's ask them what we have to do. And then they can direct us. And then we'll share our final predictions. Final, final. Final, final. Okay, we went in the wrong entrance. That was on me. Tesla very clearly says where we should go to park. Yeah, we didn't look at that at did all. Did not look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Nor did anyone else. No, no. <laughs> they were super nice though. Super nice. Um, so, okay, we're heading around and we are off to go get checked in. Uh, my understanding is the line is through, like out the ass. It's drizzling and lots of Tesla fans. Yeah, heck yeah. So, so what are your predictions? Uh... I, because, I don't know. So I, I think, I, my prediction is it's not going to be as amazing as everyone thinks. I okay. want it to be. I want the tri-motor 500 mile crazy thing because I I will, you know, that's, that's like the truck built for me. Yep. I can get over styling. It just, I actually think it looks cool. But regardless of styling, design, build quality, what I personally need is a truck that can do work. 
and I've learned my Rivian can't do as much work as I need it to do. And especially as I'm just after this trip about to do a 1600 mile road trip towing with my Rivian and it was already overheating yesterday. Yep. I'm just like, okay, this doesn't work for <laughs> what I need it to do. So I'm in the market for an electric pickup truck that can do work. I think Tesla is specking this with the smallest battery possible to get a 300 mile range number. And it, I don't know, we haven't seen 4680s charge all that well yet. Right. If we look at Brandon Flash's Model Y, it's a terrible charging curve on 4680. Horrible. So I am coming into this with low expectations, hoping to be impressed. Okay, fair enough. I don't want to come in like, you know, everyone else is like, this is going to break the world and, you know, change everything until it does. I mean, maybe it will. I don't know. Sure. But, but I'm trying not to get overexcited. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. What I want them to do is put 240 kilowatt hours worth of batteries in this thing, <laughs> a Silverado EV competitor, 400 kilowatt charging plus... It's not going to be any of that. <laughs> well, we know the weight's not there. I believe it's been said 7,000-ish pounds. 7,000 pounds. And Marquez posted a photo of the dual motor, we think, are the ones they're delivering first. Um, and that had 295-ish miles at 100%. Yep. So 300. Yep. I think they'll probably make it hit 300 in the EPA cycle. I don't know. I'm not getting too excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Well, I'm more excited just to see everyone. I love the, the community, EV owners, EV drivers. Of course, we go to a lot of non-Tesla events, primarily non-Tesla electric car events. But it's great to go to the Tesla ones and see the, the real enthusiasm out there for this brand. And, um, you know, for us, it's a brand we cover closely. It's a brand that Out of Spec has, has covered since we started. And uh, it's always special to come to these delivery events. I was at the original unveil with Brian from I1 Tesla for the Cybertruck and now I'm at the delivery four years later. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so now we're turning on to Tesla Road. I've been here a few times spotting or trying to spot Cybertrucks and I spotted some Giga castings and some other things around, but now we are actually here for the actual delivery event. So full send, full throttle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the Model S Plaid. No, it is not. <laughs> Let's get over there. There's cathode, eight Tesla road, die shop. Okay, what does this sign say here? Event rideshare, that is not us. That's not us. Model Ys, rolling around in diesel Kubotas. What are they doing? Event turn right. Holy smokes. Okay. Looks like a big event. Speed limit, 24. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they have a discount on those sides. All right, we're here at Giga Texas. We've just parked. Bunch of wall connectors and um, nice wrapped Model Y here. I think that's so, maybe Sarah. Oh, yeah? Simple Sarah. Remember she was with ah. us? Oh, yeah, we met her. Phone. She's cool. Photographer. Yeah, very yeah, cool. She just got this wrapped. Okay, nice. Looks great. Well, let's uh, let's keep going. We are on a bus, and we got already. How how bad are the fingerprints? Yes. <laughs> yes. These are cool, though. Holy okay. Smokes. Interesting. I think uh, when you use a referral pass, which is how we did this. Yep. Um, so thanks to everyone who bought a referral with our code, we get to make cool videos. Um, they give you the metal ones. Sick. Okay, just just walking in, looking around, seeing some things, transforming into castings. Pretty sick. <laughs> beautiful showroom here oh my goodness this is so nice and uh yeah cool cool stuff going all around that's great wow thing looks pretty sick colton it's really cool. this is like the first one you've seen up close yeah up close. and it looks like that in person too uh, like uh, fully built <laughs> it's definitely a few different panels they have these massive castings which look to be black 
on that one and coded. maybe coded yeah but uh yeah pretty interesting how they just like bolt everything into it so yeah and now we can see for the first time the front drive unit of the Cybertruck. There's a uh, oil filter right here, heat exchanger, interesting. So this would be, uh, yeah, I guess, guess motor and inverter all in one. It's a three in one. So motor, inverter, and reduction gear with some rubber bushings on it as well. Some connection points, oil, and coolant uh, fills, obviously, input output here for the heat exchanger. And uh, yeah, certainly pretty interesting to see this. And now we're going inside the factory. It's just like an open, unguided tour. They got a dubbed out golf cart over here. Dang, that thing is looking cool. How cool is this? Did not expect to be able to go inside the factory at all. And uh, man, I've been in so many car factories recently. This is the darkest one I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> but they probably just do that for effect. It's, uh, you've got Body Road, Electric Ave. We have uh, some chassis coming down of some kind. Yeah, so body and lights coming up and down over here. Super cool. Colton's out of the line. <laughs> We got a bunch of Model Ys cruising around inside here as well. Largest windshield installed on a high volume production vehicle. I don't know if we can consider Cybertruck high volume. Not yet. Not yet. Know. Maybe soon. It seems like they're getting ready for it. Um, that is freaking. Yeah, can I get you for scale? <laughs> These are also brand new series production Model Ys. That's what's going on there. And that's end of line final checks just over that way. So those must be large battery dual the motors. Ah, oh, they're installing the glass on this one. Oh, okay. So they're right. Cool. So basically, they are not installing any glass right now. They are purely doing this as demonstration. So our idea of seeing how many they're building. <laughs> okay, not quite. Uh, this is just a demo to show the robot bringing the bringing the glass over. How cool is that? So here we can see the Cybertruck a little bit closer. We got the charge port right there on the left side of your screen for the viewers. Of course it's got a NAX plug. Imagine that thing had CCS Colton. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. You look up underneath the batteries in this one. Sorry for the poor filming. I'm doing what I can. Here we'll come up this way. And now we can see the whole rear casting, the rear brake calipers, rear motor, going out, the battery pack, full underbody look at it. Pretty neat. I just want to see if we can get up to see the front uh, area of the truck. Here we go. Coming down. Ah, just as we were getting it. Anyway, we have to continue and move along. So let's just keep moving. Everyone's taking photos, selfies. It's a uh, Quite the excitement from the viewers around here. So, look at how many of these they have. yeah, they got a whole line of all of these cyber trucks going down. So, it doesn't seem like they're building them actively right now. They've sort of stopped them, and a few of them are going through sort of a demo mode. You can see the rear air suspension on this one very clearly. They all seem to be like this one has the white interior. Look at the roll up there for the bed. See how low that sits down there? Oh, interesting point, Colton. So this is where the bed uh, tonneau would go, I guess. That's pretty wild. Is that really how far it goes? It must. It's gotta be, it's gotta be there, yeah. That's pretty crazy. So a uh, lot of things that we're gonna be learning throughout this. That tonneau is a good spot. It's almost like they could have done a Rivian gear tunnel situation. Yeah, instead of the tonneau. Instead right? of the tonneau, but uh, I guess they didn't. Uh, you know, that's just bed space. So. Does this have glass installed on the rear? Can't uh, it has glass on the roof and the windshield, right. but can't tell about the rear window. It appears like it does. So this is where the front motor basically gets installed into the whole front assembly of the vehicle. You can see it's shipped down. It's built up with the um, you know front suspension components, the front brakes. Here's where the motor gets installed inside of it as well. There seems to be some sort of NVH casing around the front, which is not unusual uh, for Tesla at all. So that uh, all looks pretty normal to me. And you can see that the whole front assembly just gets built up, built up pretty much alongside the vehicles 
I mean, look at all of these. I mean, they just go on and on. Right, yeah, it's just each station builds up another component of that front assembly. I mean, nothing um, super unusual from what we've seen from Tesla or even other factories, uh, to be honest. Here's a little station that uh, I guess there's some access. If something were to happen, they could get in here. Pretty neat. You know, it all looks pretty legit to me. It's super well, well sorted in my opinion. I'm not a great reviewer of factories. We all know this. I'm definitely much more on the this vehicle cool side. Right here, you can get basically come down a little bit. Oh yeah, check all that out. So you can see some of the thermals, uh, you know, the, the HVAC lines, the, uh, I can't quite tell if we can see any battery pack thermals going on in there, but uh, certainly some stamps, some pieces of metal, whole front assembly shock absorber with air, pretty cool. Not not loving that front upper control arm, like you were saying. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't know what's going on with that. Well, we got to... Tesla and upper control arms haven't been known for the most reliable <laughs> and, and it doesn't look doesn't look promising here but what, who are we to judge I don't know we'll have to uh, test it out of course so lots of people lots of things going on we're just kind of perusing at our own pace this is the best factory tour because you can stop you're not locked into a pace really great I think we've reached a bottleneck around the, the motor size of holy juiciness I'm surprised how big it is. What the heck's going on here? Oh, this is the so this is the tri motor. Yeah, rear unit dual induction motor. So okay, so this is 845 horsepower induction, which is no rare earth magnets. Yep. Non permanent magnet. Why would they do an induction? And it has a mechanical front locking diff. So we can control both the firmware. You don't need a differential anymore because they're both mechanically independent. Uh, and together, all three, so these two, and then the one in the front for the tri, uh, produce 845 horsepower. Okay. So it's pretty impressive. What's yeah. the front the front like 300? Uh, about, I would say. I don't know the individual specs for it. Uh, but you get a permanent magnet motor in the front of the tri, and in the dual, you get the permanent magnet for your induction switch in the front. What was the rationale to go induction motors instead of permanent magnet like you have been doing on a, the other motors? Uh, so like, so if you have like your Model S Plaid is the only one that we have that has multiple permanent magnets. Right, magnet. that's all permanent magnet. Yeah. Everything else you run an induction front yeah. and permanent on the yep. on the primary axle. So, so the general idea behind that is that a permanent magnet motor has higher active efficiency but lower passive efficiency. Sure. With Whereas an induction motor, you have to spend energy to induce the electromagnetic field. Yep. So you have worse active so we are being rushed along here. It sounds like we're going to be able to come back through here afterwards. This is, I would say, a lot more built out than I thought it would be, Kyle. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Um, it's like a full legit, they're ready to rock and roll. Yeah. So uh, I think they just need to flip the switch and crank the dial. Not that I know anything about building anything. <laughs> <laughs> Seems easy, right? Look at these three stacked up here. Here we go. The first one we've seen with wheels on in here. Let's see if I can uh, figure out what tire size we're rocking here. Than the Rivian tire. Just, okay. Just, yep. Just ten. I think they're two sixty fives or two seventy fives on the Rivian. These are two eighty five, sixty five. So a little bit wider, a little bit taller, of course, but not by much. So they're saying no liner required here on this sign for the truck bed, which is quite interesting. Get a good look back here. You can see the glass in there, it looks pretty sweet. I think we have like a car that we can see that's pretty dusty, so my guess is it sat there for a while. So they took the wheels off, took the doors off. <laughs> Look at all these back here. Yeah. That I've seen today. We haven't seen light seats at all, which is interesting. <laughs> so at least that we've seen. 
Man, do these things look cool back there in the dark, though? Holy you know, smokes. I, I think they look I think awesome. they look sick. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Yeah. I really hated these things when they first came out, honestly. Yeah. Seeing photos, and then you just go, oh my god. Get a good look at the rear bed here. That's yeah, looking pretty awesome. This is where I need to be all the time. Yeah, this is your kind of thing. So when you examine a cyber truck, it's been through the yep. <laughs> Not that they do anything about it coming no, through. No. <laughs> but it's been through here. This is so cool though. This is my kind of stuff right here. Yeah, this is all Colton right here. As Bjorn would say, holy macaroni. <laughs> this is crazy. So um, Colton, the vehicles pass through here, right? Do they look at them? I, I mean, on Model X's, I don't think they do, <laughs> honestly. But in all honesty, this is really cool to see. I mean, I've watched a ton of videos on these. This is what really interests me more than like all the production stuff. Cause I'm like, all the final last details. This is where all the guys like me are polishing them. I'm yeah. Gonna be on cyber trucks. Well, uh, you know, stay tuned to Out of Spec Detailing. You'll be taking a look at everything. We have our friend Dan from What's Inside and Zach. How's it going, dude? It's uh, good to see these guys. And uh, yep, we got some stuff going on down here. So let's figure out how to get to where we need to get to. But there you go. You just went through the line. Hell yeah. Okay, now we're just in a mosh pit of people around here. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty exciting to see all the excitement, that's for sure. I think we're all heading into this uh, little area. Hey dude, how's it going? You join us now in the crowd, super white backdrop there, and uh, everyone's just getting settled in, looking like we're getting ready to uh, start this thing. I think we have an okay view, and uh, very much uh, looking forward to learning about this. It's still very much a mystery in some areas to us. It was great to learn about the drivetrain on the way through, great to see the factory, but now really can't wait to see what this presentation has. And I'm hoping for some nerdy info, although maybe I shouldn't hope that much. Either way, hopefully after the event, we can really start looking into the specs, doing the testing and doing everything I want to do with this truck, which is see how it tows, how it drives, how it charges, all of these things to come. Come back behind here, Colton. The build looks good. It looks, really, really looks good. Looks pretty damn Look good. The ambient lights in there, how it. It's yeah. Kind of yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of into it. The more I see it, really into it. And also the fact that like everyone hates it also kind of makes it cool. You know. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of digging it for sure. Joy, what do you think of this thing? This is amazing, mind blowing. Are you gonna get one? Unfortunately not, because. Need for it, sure. I can't park it, but if I had a place to park it, I then you'd go. Would. Oh my goodness! Cool. Yeah. Well, great to see you, of you course, and have... we'll see you at the after party yes. thing, so that'll we'll be great. Up. And uh, yeah, pretty sick. We're just gonna head on down. The so, here's the truck just looking at this angle right over here. Not pleased with that angle at all. Of course, they had to do that for rear seat room, but um, damn, it just makes the effective bed length at least a foot shorter, maybe eight inches shorter, something like that. You can see the tonneau comes up and over, and I hope they designed it better than Rivian designed their tonneau, which constantly breaks. Looks like they have a NEMA 1450 with this welder plugged into it. NEMA 520 outlets right there, we've seen that. Uh, there's four positions for roof rails throughout. Some build stuff going on here, but that's not unusual. Body lines are okay. Uh, but overall, I mean, like, I think if anyone delivered this truck, they'd be not complaining about the build quality. It's not, doesn't seem to be a topic with the early production trucks. Yeah. So, yeah, all very, all very cool. And if you just look back here, there's an underfloor latch that you pull right there. 
And so it seems to be a single point latch rather than dual. No bed liner needed apparently. And so there's an underfloor right here, um, but not sure how deep it is or anything. And that could be what's going on with this tray. But would they give up that much departure for the underfloor? I'm not sure. The man, the myth, the legend getting the Tesla flags. They just bought the doors. I know. People, so people were in. Did you not get in? No. What the heck? There's got to be one we can get in. Um, we just met the guy who did the interior for it. He was super cool. I'm going to have to lay on the dashboard and clean these windshields. Yeah, goodness. How are you going to clean that windshield, Colton? Seems to be Alcantara dash. Stitched Alcantara. I don't know. I guess microfiber. They probably didn't use actual Alcantara. Yeah, probably suede material. Yeah, right now all the interiors have this, but they were saying maybe slight differences for each model, like tri-motor versus dual motor, and also perhaps some slight differences like white seats may come in the future. Raj over here getting his thumbnail. Fingerprints central over here. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to talk. Okay, what, what does Raj think about this? Um, so, two big things that I came here to looking for, price and range. Both were conveniently left out of the keynote, which really irritated me. So as soon as the keynote was done, I went on the website, got the price, got the range. I'm looking at the all-wheel drive. That's what I pre-ordered. I'm happy with the range, 340 miles. But exactly in which cost. cycle? We don't know. In which... Because there's multiple EPA cycles that Tesla can choose. True. And so we're like, okay, which one? Uh, yes. And yeah. we all know that the range is very subjective to yeah. how you drive. And so, so yes, as yeah. far as like what's written, okay, I'm yeah. happy. But yeah. the price, you know, I, I, I gave myself a 10K stretch. 50, okay, 60, we're going up to 70, and the all-wheel drive is 80K. Now I get it. Next year, we've got the instant tax credit. So that'll be nice. That'll bring it down. But... A little bit of a tough pill to swallow, and then the tri motor, what was promised to people was 500 plus miles, we're way, way under that. And at 100k, I think people are going to be having to either dig really deep into their pockets for this, or maybe just go, Is this something that you really need or want? And um, I, I totally agree with what you're saying if you look at the original pricing. But yes. if you know, I came into this from my perspective, like ignoring everything Tesla has said about it, yes. and I I was spot on with the 79,990 for the sure. dual. Yes. I was like, hell yeah, that's great. Uh, and I think a hundred grand for the tri motor is not bad. Uh, so no, I, I, just, <laughs> I, I mean, get... considering a plaid not long ago was $145,000. That's true. And if you take the pricing and you actually compare it to the rest of the industry, it's in line. Totally. So yeah. I'm going off of what I want. I'm being a little <laughs> selfish, but yes, if we look at straight numbers across the board, they aimed it perfectly at beating spec-wise of all the other competitors, pricing competitively, and so forth. So I don't blame them for what they did. Just, I, I, I'm i thinking about the all-wheel drive. And you got to get it. You got to get it. I know. You got to get it. You can't not get it. The Tesla stretch, man. The yeah, Tesla do stretch. the Tesla stretch. You yes. got to have it. I will. I will uh, you'll have detailed clients forever. As you'll have I'm with it. Truck Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, I mean, everybody's like, oh, I'm never going to so we have closed down the place. We're the last ones out of here. That's security pushing us out. Uh, you guys, were you in the video with the Taiga? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sure. My friend Kevin, who uh, is super involved with Tesla for a long time, huge EV enthusiast. Uh, Colton, your impressions after now getting to spend some time and talk to everyone. Everyone's really a downer on this thing. Yeah, I was I'm so shocked. pumped. Agreed. Totally <laughs> Normally, agreed. I'm the Tesla downer, and I'm like, damn, this thing is like the right price. Yep. The specs look okay. And everyone's like, well, it's not 40 grand, which... I don't know why they would believe it's 40 grand. Yeah, it's like so much truck, I feel like, for that. So my impressions were when this thing initially launched, I was like, this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I wanted nothing to do with it. I've been a large skeptic, in all honesty. Seeing these things here in person, they are just insane looking. Now, throughout the, the whole keynote, we didn't get all of the nerdy stuff that you and I really wanted and everything. There's some stuff up on the website, but testing needs to be done. But Man, I think they look insane, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to see these in every Whole Foods Whole Foods parking lot. That's right. Some mall crawlers yeah. right here. Um, so yeah, it looks like actually maybe that one's on the arrows. Hard to tell. Maybe not. But we literally have like the factory to ourselves right now. So yeah, and we're heading out this way. So let's continue. Yeah, thank you all. Congratulations. Congrats on the launch. Yeah, thanks. See you guys. 
ever the, really the energy the, the staff yeah. here really Donuts. great wow i'm normally where the tesla downers what's going on here i feel like we're livening up the party here I don't know. yeah everybody was shocked with the pricing and uh, i was like it's way cheaper than i thought it was gonna be well, like we talked about you know four years ago they launched pricing to me that was just like i knew for a fact it wasn't gonna be that because the economy's changed things have all changed but like just seeing how many of these darn things everywhere is so cool Hell yeah. I don't really understand what people are thinking. Either. I just want to look at this inlet port really quick. Someone was saying maybe it had MCS, but it doesn't. That's just pure NACS right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I so. just think it's so cool looking. I mean, it's wild in person. Yeah, that thing is crazy. I mean, I, the more I spend time with it, the less wild it feels. It just feels normal. And we literally have the factory to ourselves, Colton. What are we doing? Yeah. We have <laughs> the Cybertruck factory. Uh, to ourselves. This is so cool. There are just so many of them and in all different stages, which is cool to see. So tow hitch fully integrated because we haven't seen the tow hitch yet. So um, my theory on that. Okay. Yeah. So everybody's talked about this departure angle. Yeah. Large box down there. Yeah. My theory is that is where all of the towing arms are behind there. Okay. That piece is going to drop down because if you look how they normally go, it's this big kind of U-bar shaped situation going on yeah that's my theory okay but but we have one over here we can just look at so yeah. rather than testing your theory we got a truck that's exactly <laughs> okay so let's just do a zoom uh i think you're wrong dang it okay good theory but theory. i'm not really seeing anything under there to justify the need for that plastic cover uh, i mean there's a few components. you have your lower control arms which are not as beefy as like a Hummer EV at I think all. It, I think it is part of the tow bar. Oh, okay. So that metal bit down there. Yeah. Attaching is that attached to the tow bar? But it seems quite high. Why yeah. does that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, here's the towing portion right here. So still not sure what's going on underneath the little bars or the little plastic panels. But, oh, is this, this is the underfloor. Oh, okay. So maybe this is why it dips down, but uh, way deeper than I was expecting. That is super cool. This is interesting, this steering system over here. So this is a gray going on. Ah, gray dash in here. Feels nice. Hmm, interesting. Some cabling under here. These seats feel really nice. Yeah, white uh, labels here. This is beta build. Everest beta build. Hmm. Interesting. Super cool. So, do you think the rear view, they're going to have one of those camera rear views? I was thinking they must have to because when the tonneau's down or up, you won't be able to see anything. Yeah, um, you and me, you're yeah. six foot, I think you're hitting. Six foot, you're I'm good? Five, eight. Okay. Are we allowed to sit in here? I do. Okay, nice. I know. Are you going to kick us out if I sit in here? Might as well, right? Engineering truck. Hell yeah. Mayor Kyle, smile, bud. Sitting in it. <laughs> How's it feel? Yeah, it feels good. Me. Feels good. Actually, no no problem with the headroom at all. Oh my God. From my side. Like Colton, you can't even wash the windshield on this thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I fit. I was not expecting to be able to fit in the back, but I do. For sure. Whoa, okay. So we have a rear motor. And this one, this is a dual motor configuration. Is this uh, some sort of power electronics or the top of the battery, I guess it would be sort of a penthouse situation. So onboard charger, maybe some power electronics. Interesting. Top of the rear air struts back here, super wide air struts. You know, I think 420 liters, they were saying something like that of air management not convinced on whatever's going on over here with the upper control arm. That just looks like it's on 35s, but if you want to go 37s, probably a no-go. <laughs> but someone in Florida is going to put it on 37s and squat it, which will be hilarious. <laughs> well, guys, even though we have literally the factory to ourselves, um, <laughs> the, the video's not over because we're actually heading to a little after party with a bunch of Tesla and EV enthusiasts. Um, and other content creators, so it should be a blast. We're gonna jump back in the race car Model 3 with the worst tires I've ever been on. <laughs> and head over to whatever event is. Then we can go see our friend Andreas. 
Yes. And uh, yeah, I mean, any any day we get to go hang out with EV nerds is a good day. So let's head that away. Dang, I am digging this thing in matte black. Personally, this is looking super cool. Okay, so when you send these over to Europe, this is the one thing I was thinking about. Your Euro plate's going to cover the reverse lights. Nice. Not that it really matters, <laughs> but there will definitely be some Euro folks who want these things over there. And then uh, looks like we have some accessories on one over here. So what does this say? Stealth? Ah, so this is the film, I guess. Like uh, the, the PPF that they do on the other cars. And then over here, a bunch of Tesla folks all around with the tent option. This looks like a pain in the ass to set up if you ask me. Would you ever take the time to set this thing up, Colton? No, it looks like origami. <laughs> it's not, does not look like it's the easiest thing to, but here's how the roof rails go. So that's the first we're seeing those. It looks like they're one version that can fit throughout the truck at different widths. You can see they expand in the middle. Under seat storage, oh, hell yeah. Okay, very cool, love that. It's one of my favorite features from the Rivian is the under seat storage. So yeah, let's take a look at the screen here. 96 miles on this particular one. It's showing a warning. Very cool. Yeah, like, liking this quite a bit. Yeah, neato. Uh -huh. Did not mean to get in Raja's video there. They got the ATV situation here with a little mini cyber truck. Front trunk opened up as well. Kim's filming, everyone's doing their thing. Just a beautiful entrance here to the facility. They have one of their trucks that went to Mexico with the light bar on top, loving that. You can see Franz from the design team over here just talking to people with a baseball, I guess, that he threw at the truck. Here's Brandon. Throwing a baseball at the window. Oh, Franz is throwing the baseball at the I'll window? The bar right now. But it's not a metal barrel. Yeah, not a, it's not a steel ball. Oh, come now. on, get out of here. That was bouncing off, but it just looks like a baseball. It is just a baseball, okay. So pretty cool that they're all, you know, just checking everything out. Here's a crash tested one. This is kind of cool. This is what most cyber trucks will look like in their second life. <laughs> this is the kind of testing we need to do, Colton. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That's Interesting. Really wild. It's just like separated itself there. That's wild. It looks like it's just adhesive for yeah. this whole piece. But adhesive can be stronger oh, than metal in, in some cases. Definitely. So that's really cool. We have one of the engineers here from the safety team discussing the deformation strength. Ah, oh, so neat. Here's one of the ones that they shot. Does anyone need a bulletproof truck? Yes, Fort Collins is dangerous, isn't it? Very dangerous there. For those who don't know, we're neighbors. We did our Highland review yep. together. Yeah, James should be a neighbor. I should. But um, yeah, damn, I'm gonna definitely make my Cybertruck look like this at the earliest opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have another side impact crash over here as well. Just wanted to come in here and take a look at the clearances on the brakes, they're super tight. So I'm looking at this for Drew from Martian Wheels because he's already working on the upgraded wheels for this thing from Martian. So can't wait for that. And uh, yeah, you can see the airbag coming out from the side on both front and rear. It's getting windy out here. Here's how the towing situation looks under here. You can see you have your wiring connections, your chain hookups, good looking receiver. No issues with that from my side. That all looks pretty good. You join me for a rate your charge update. Wasn't able to precondition to this supercharger because it's not shown on the map. We are at a private supercharger here at Gigafactory in Austin and we're here for the Cybertruck event. So it was a unique opportunity to plug into this charger. I'll probably never be able to charge at again. We are juicing up the Model 3 standard range. We got a bunch of content creators in the car. We got James, we got Tesla Flex, we got Colton. Ooh. We got, oh, we can set it up as the phone key. 38 kilowatts. Woo. It started at 65. Yeah, it was at 65. Oh, 65, yeah. yeah. Nice. But uh, we're top charging this thing. So anyway, that's all we needed. We can go now. So you join us a few hours later now at an event, uh, sort of with the viewers. I guess a lot of folks who weren't able to go to the actual event are here. And uh, cool that there's actually a Cybertruck uh, rolling in now. And yeah, kind of everyone's first time all over again seeing it in person and uh 
here it goes, rolling in. So, and it's actually one of the delivered ones, Colton. That's a that's a personally owned one. It was on a temp tag. It was not on a manufacturer plate. So wow. that's cool. Going to California. That's right. So, um, yeah, very cool to see a uh, an actually delivered unit. We were thinking maybe they faked it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, very, very cool. Good to see everyone's reactions. And, uh, you know, we'll let everyone do their thing. But this is what's going on tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so someone brought their private. Is this a privately owned truck, right, Eric? I don't know who's this. It's got a temp tag on it. Dally temp plates on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, Ted or something like that. Yeah. So uh, you, should just, you should just buy it off them. We are we are trying hard. Yeah, me, too. <laughs> me too. Good morning. Hello. It's uh, I've been up podcasting, talking Cybertruck stuff. I got to watch everyone's videos because the embargo went. So Marquez should have his video. And have you seen any of them? I just started Marquez. How how was it? How was the beginning? Yeah, looked awesome. Okay. Yeah, he always he's just the best. Agreed. Uh, so okay, let's uh, roll. We got to get you to the airport. Yep. I think I leave twenty minutes after you. So bags in. And let's end this Cybertruck vlog here in a moment. Um, super cool. Well, Colton, it is time to head out and return the rental car. We didn't even set it up in our app. The, the notification <laughs> did pop up uh, yesterday yes, after we had taken possession of it. And um, now we are ready to return it. So we'll have to do another Hertz video. We've just been so slammed for time. And now we gotta make these flights, 7.30 a.m. And uh, welcome to Austin, Texas. So let's end the video with our final thoughts on the Cybertruck, if you wouldn't mind sharing your opinion. Yeah, I mean, the event itself was super, super neat. Um, you know, honestly, pricing was what I kind of expected. I really expected it to be higher than it actually was. Wow, look at the speed here, so friends. Fast. Very big speed. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of people just seem to be disappointed, which was really interesting. I've um, never seen Tesla fans so yeah. down. Yeah, I totally agree. It was pretty <laughs> shocking. And Kyle and I were like, yeah, this is freaking awesome. Yeah, so We've never been the ones to like be like, oh, this is great. Not at all. So, yeah, I thought it was a cool event. I'm pumped about the truck. I went into it kind of hating it, and now I kind of want one really bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me too. I, I really want one. I want one of the tri-motor crazy ones. Yep. But I think the dual motor is the sweet spot. Agreed. I'm going to do a whole video, a product video, on everything we know about Cybertruck. You know, sort of watch the videos, come at it from a technical perspective, like we do with every major EV launch. We'll kind of get everyone on the same page with what our expectations are and, and all that stuff try and keep it realistic but um yeah sounds like we'll be able to test one hopefully pretty soon which i'm looking forward to again all of these things you just never know when or how they'll come together but uh we, we just need to get one on test and i think it looks incredible i'm so into the styling like just i went from like hating it to being okay with it last week where i was like oh, okay i'm kind of getting really into yeah. it to now i'm just like coolest freaking thing ever <laughs> and um that's just my opinion. I'm not a style guy. Yeah, I went through that yesterday. Of, yeah, I think I'm going to hate this thing. It's going to look dumb in person. And then I see it and I'm like, oh, uh, that's really cool. And I think the specs are uh, pretty reasonable given the economy today and given everything. They just should have never, yeah, totally never done that original launch event, uh, you know, the unveil. So I hope they stop with that kind of BS because I think the Roadster is also going to be a disappointment. Yeah. Um, what a cool time in Austin. Fly in, go see the Cybertruck. The event they put on was amazing. Huge thanks to the Tesla team because they really were open, friendly, like you mentioned in the previous clip, just accommodating, let us get all the footage we needed to get. Um, you know, and, and everyone was open about their, you know, certainly they're like some things we can't say. Sure, yeah. Um, and, and they were open about it, but they, everything they could talk about, they did yep. and share. And I just thought... Um, really like it didn't feel like there was a a pr media team suppressing information which is how i feel whenever i go to these events which are like here are the talking points we want to share about the car and uh yeah that's what we're going to stick to tesla was like i could talk to the dude who did the brakes and he would tell me about the caliper design and all these and it was just really great yeah. so um you know maybe i'm just excited about the information we got and, and the vibe but the vibe was good uh between the tesla employees you can tell internally they were really proud really excited and um, 
uh, and, and I couldn't couldn't really be more thrilled. Where we go, food, gas, retail, cell phone lot. Another white model uh, three. Imagine that. Let's let's go this way. I Isn't think it? you're supposed to go straight. You think so? Yeah. I think we're at the general aviation side of things and the cargo facility, not the. Uh, so side. we're probably going to want to be on rental car lane. Um, is that a thing? Yeah, that's what it just said. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Try Rental that. car lane. But I think maybe this is their storage lot. Uh, it could be. Oh, they got a bunch of bolts over here. Bolts. Um, Zoom. All right. Well, anyway, let's end the video as to, I think Colton, you and I are in agreement that it's, we're both really into it and I kind of want one. Yeah. It's just such a unique looking product. I don't think like... The motor tech, the battery tech, to me, seems like it's miles better than what's out there. I am i don't know. we got to drive this thing and see what it actually does. Yeah, nothing is screaming innovation. No, not at all. I mean, the design is for sure, but yeah, this is, uh, it's really quite interesting. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. And uh, thanks for bringing me down here, sir. Yeah, of course. That was really fun. And uh, thank you all for watching our experience. I know there's a bunch of Cybertruck content out there. So we appreciate you checking out ours and comment below with your thoughts. I know you will anyway. And uh, we'll see you all in another one soon. Bye-bye.